Hi there, I'm Coach Craig Kenneth. And I'm Coach Victoria. And today we're gonna to be talking about he's an avoidant. Surprise, surprise. Mm -hmm. And a little surprise, we're twinsies today. <laughs> we are. <laughs> We're matching shirts. <laughs> I saw Victoria's shirt and I said, hold on. I'll be right back. And here we are. Twins. <laughs> we look like the shining twins. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, we talk a lot about attachment styles on the channel because it really has a massive impact mm -hmm. on relationships and breakups. And many of you are hearing about attachment theory for the first time. Some of you are in therapy and your clinicians don't even know about it yet because it's a relatively new thing that's being studied and explored. And, mm -hmm. you know, even more and more, we're starting to learn about this because it really has a massive impact on our mental health and our ability to love. Mm -hmm. So when you understand that somebody sees love differently than you, it can help you navigate a relationship a lot better, right? Because whoever you date is going to have different needs. And the more that you can understand their needs, the better you can be at trying to deal with those difficult things. Because, you know, oftentimes the person has the exact opposite need that you do. Mm -hmm. And we're pushing for our own agenda. And then they're pushing for theirs and it winds up in a breakup. Exactly. And what we're trying to do as a channel is to increase this awareness, noticing your behavior and noticing what emotions come up for you. We know that attachment theory and maybe some of the terms might seem a little bit complicated, but one of the main goals with our channel is turning this more into common knowledge. This is not stuff that they teach you in school. And it's our hope and part of our advocacy as a YouTube channel to make this type of information more accessible. Yeah, it's very enlightening and it truly will change all of your relationships with your friends, your family, your coworkers. You'll understand people so much better, but you really have to put in the work. Mm -hmm. Okay, if you just get lazy and focus on, I have to get my ex back, then you're probably really not going to grow enough for long lasting change and you're going to revert back to your old ways, mm -hmm. right? So you really want to make this a part of truly understanding your experience as a human being to understand your friends, your family, and your partners better. Mm -hmm. So we've got a good email coaching today. Now, this woman has done a tremendous amount of work since our initial email coaching. Uh, she's been working on the creative healing course and she talked a lot about how uh, helpful it has been in understanding her situation and her own attachment issues. So uh, let's get into this one. I think you guys are gonna find this one helpful, okay? She says, hi, Coach Craig. I've done well managing my anxiety over the year and working on myself. I've improved so much. I feel like a better person who is in control of herself. He came back. Though I worked on my anxious attachment, I didn't stay with the boundaries and let us go on the merry-go-round again. Mm. Now, Boundaries is something we really went into with the creative healing course. Mm -hmm. You went you went a bit crazy with the boundary <laughs> stuff, right? Yeah. yeah, we do have sections <laughs> that talk about different areas in your life to create boundaries. And it's it's so important because otherwise we fall into these patterns and we're unaware of them. Mm -hmm. And then we find ourselves becoming more resentful later on in the relationship and don't know why. It's better to start out with this foundation of this is who I am, these are what my limits are, and mm -hmm. be clear cut from the very beginning. Yeah. Yeah. I remember when we were working on the course, you had sent me so much stuff on boundaries. I'm like, hold, slow down. <laughs> I think it might be in like five, section five or six. Yeah, maybe. It might be out of control with boundaries, <laughs> but it's good stuff Yeah. because yeah, it does really come back. If mm -hmm. you don't work on the boundaries, then you're going to be tolerating stuff that you're unhappy about. Mm -hmm. So it's, it was a great insight for you to see that. Yeah. And I'm glad that we put that all in there. So she goes on to say, he is an avoidant and has admitted that when he thinks of marriage and commitment, he feels literally sick mm -hmm. and has a panic attack. 
Sounds wow. pretty avoidant. Yeah. I mean, those are some pretty serious symptoms here. Mm. Uh, to literally get physically sick and have a panic attack. That that feels like trauma related to mm -hmm. me, right? That's exactly what I'm thinking too. Mm -hmm. What is causing him to have this reaction? Yeah. So you got to understand somebody that is that scared of commitment, they're going to have uh, a lot of different things that would set them off. Mm -hmm. A lot of different triggers right. that would make them go like Speedy Gonzalez, mm -hmm. right? Run away. Okay, so she goes on to say, he doesn't invite me to anything with his friends or family. And I asked him why. His excuse was that we were on and off again all the time and he didn't want to be all over me in front of them, trying to set a good Christian example. I didn't believe it. Yeah, I don't believe it either. <laughs> uh, yeah, that to me is a big red flag. Yeah. You know, and to me, that's part of him not being able to integrate you into his life. And also, you want to have that type of transparency. Hey, this is what's going on in my life. If they were really his friends and really supportive of him, they would understand those dynamics. Sure, they might have some judgments, but these are not things that you hide from people that care about you. Yeah, I mean, you'd wonder... Are they hiding me because there's other people mm -hmm. they're seeing? You know, things like that. I'm not saying that he just did it, but many people will do things like this because they're hiding you. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. And they will have very good reasons or excuses as to why they are, are not being as transparent. Yeah. So setting a good Christian example, I mean, that's a simple fix. I'm just saying, okay, let's have some boundaries. <laughs> let's have some boundaries about public displays of affection. You know, that's one conversation that, sure. that could lead you in that direction. So. Yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. I stated that I believe it's because it's a statement that we are together and he's afraid of it. Mm. I, I mean, yeah, that certainly sounds like... Mm -hmm. uh, Definitely one thing I'd be wondering too, yeah. right? He's told me many times over the year that his plan is to marry me, but puts no action behind it. Mm. So, another red flag, right? Because what's really going on with this guy? Are you hiding me? Are you just leading me on? What's going on here? You want to feel like some kind of traction is happening here, some mm -hmm. kind of momentum. All right. And just tying this back into attachment styles, you do see a lot of times with those who are more avoidantly attached that they have this idea of, yes, I do want a family. Yes, I do want kids one day. But when you do look at the behaviors, the intimacy that it takes to go that direction is just not there. Yeah. They don't have that capacity. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. But... I really just wanted commitment. I didn't push marriage like he acted I did. Mm. Okay, so that's like, what's going on? Is he being overly sensitive to marriage? Uh, you know, is he maybe gaslighting a bit? Mm. You know, like, oh, you're making it into this when she's like, I'm just looking for commitment here. Right. And so maybe he's kind of blowing it out of proportion a bit, kind of gaslighting what was really going on there. Mm -hmm. So it's another red flag for me. Right. And you have to think about all of this working together. You know, that piece of information alone probably wouldn't concern me as much because everything is so relative, but also seeing his reaction to just talking about marriage, being him panicking, yeah. really makes me question what's going on here. Yeah. In the fall, I got angry at him. His brother threw a party and he wouldn't invite me. I accused him of trying to save face and that he was afraid to be seen with me. I told him I was done and not to call me unless he wanted to be with me. Well, she, stu she stood up for herself mm -hmm. and I'm glad she did mm -hmm. because I think the frustration had been building up and she's like, this is what I want and I feel like you're hiding me. You know, you don't want to be seen with me. Like, you know, it gets to you after a while. Right. And it seems like there was also no negotiation there. Let's say this was a really big deal to him. There could have been steps taken beforehand. Like, let's say, let's go to a casual lunch with some friends or some other event that was planned. But it seems like even those conversations might have been difficult in this type of relationship. Mm -hmm. I agree. He called back later that night, sober, asked if I was really done. I explained how I had been feeling neglected and hidden and I needed commitment. 
He said he wasn't ready to be married. So we left that phone call angry at each other and I went no contact. Now you see how he jumps to marriage again real quick? Mm -hmm. Like leaps from, I want commitment to marriage. That's a huge leap in logic there. Mm -hmm. Asking for a commitment is very different than asking to be married. Right. Right? Like if you say I want to be exclusive, that's very different than I want to spend the rest of my life for you, mm -hmm. with you. Mm -hmm. I also really like how she approached that conversation, if it is how she's telling it, that she was saying, I feel neglected. A lot of times in these types of conflict, people have the tendency to want to control the other person. You have to invite me. If you don't do this, then, you know, then I'm going to break up with you or I'm going to leave. That phrases it more like an ultimatum. Yeah. It seemed like she was really trying to emphasize, hey, my needs aren't getting met here and I don't know what to do. Well, she did a great job. She'd been doing the creative healing course. <laughs> She'd been doing it for like a year. Yeah, we so she, see it. yeah, you mm -hmm. could see she's handled herself really well here. Yeah. Okay, he says, or she says, a week went by. He went to a friend's bachelor party. Someone told me his friend used his phone to invite a girl down there that his brother was trying to get him with. Getting mm -hmm. kind of messy here, isn't it? This is awful messy for a, a, a girl showing up at a, a bachelor party, right? Yeah. His friend used a phone to invite a girl that his brother wanted him to get with. I'm not buying that. That just sounds a little like... Uh... Yeah, what's going on? Yeah. He always said he wasn't interested in her and not to worry. <laughs> 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 How many times have you heard that? <laughs> you don't have to worry about this. He's just I would a never friend. date that person. Yeah. Wait, you said you would never. Now you're dating that person, and we just broke up last week. <laughs> By never, I mean probably. <laughs> yeah. Well, like I heard from the Applebee's girl, I'll never date a deputy. I'll never date a deputy. Mm. And she left me to go date a deputy. <laughs> and then when it didn't work out with that deputy, she married a different deputy. Really? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so by never dating a deputy, she meant I'm going to only date deputies from here on out, and I'm going to marry one. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Wow. Well. Oh, gosh. All right. So let me go on here. She said that she didn't worry about it because he said not to worry. Yeah. But after finding out, he let them pretend it was him I felt I'd been lied to. Well, mm. yeah, it's, it's very suspicious. The week before, he wouldn't take me to a party to be a good example and told me he planned to marry me. I got angry and called. All right, so it sounds like more of the same there. Yeah, and it sounds like potentially a little love bomby there. Mm -hmm. You know, she's been saying for a long time in this relationship that she wanted at least steps towards commitment. Mm -hmm. And now all of a sudden he's promising marriage out of the blue. Yeah. It, it seems like a, a dramatic switch. And if I were her, I would be suspicious. Yeah. Where is this coming from? Yeah. And I want to see actions. Mm -hmm. I shouldn't have, but my anxiety got the best of me for the first time in a long time. Mm -hmm. He didn't answer. It was four o'clock and he was sleeping four in the morning. He called back at 3 p.m. the next day, but I got self-control back and didn't want to talk to him about it anymore. So she had a moment of weakness, mm. but then she pulled herself together when he called back. We weren't together. I had no place to say anything, so I didn't answer in fear of bringing it up and seeming insecure. He called 14 times oh, wow. before I answered. See how anxious avoidant people can be? Mm -hmm. She didn't call him back and he lost emotional self-control. Okay, you see, things can shift when you shift your behavior and change those things internally about yourself. Mm -hmm. And now he's calling 14 times. Mm. He said he was worried about me. Sure you were. Mm -hmm. You're worried, but not about me, mm. right? It wasn't like me not to answer him. See, now the tables have turned. Mm -hmm. I explained that I shouldn't have called and it was a mistake. He pressed to know why I did. See, she, he wants to know he's still got his safety net. Mm -hmm. That's what he's looking for here. 
Does she still want to be with me? She's not answering me. Now, you see, this is what happens a lot with the dumper. Mm -hmm. When they feel like they've lost you, now they lose emotional self-control. Right. And it, there's an element of him taking her for granted. Mm -hmm. It seemed like before he wasn't so enthusiastic about her needs and the things that she was saying. And now all of a sudden, there's a dramatic change. That's right. Because he's afraid he's lost her. Right. Now she's not answering mm -hmm. me. Right? I can't believe it. She's not answering me. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I told him I felt like he was lying to me about her. He said it shouldn't have happened, it was a mistake, and she didn't go that he didn't like her. I said I didn't believe him anymore. We bickered for a while, then hung up. He called an hour later apologizing. I said I already forgave him, but I was hurt, and then he needs to make up his mind. Well, she's kind of standing up for herself mm -hmm. here, and I don't blame her. Yeah. Right? She feels like he's messing with her head here. Mm -hmm. He said he feels unstable. He's certainly acting unstable, isn't he? Yeah. And doesn't think he'd make a good husband. That he doesn't know how to take care of someone and doesn't want to be like his dad and cheat on his wife. Okay, so it sounds like so much, you know, trauma there. Mm -hmm. And he's got to talk about that and he's got to deal with that like an adult. See, you know, people have these unconscious fears and then they kind of replay it in their own life. Mm -hmm. Right? Yeah. And it seems like at this point now he's suddenly really open about everything. I think he's really triggered in this moment. Yep, I agree. Mm -hmm. That's often what happens when the avoidant is afraid they've lost you. Mm -hmm. He said that I had every right to be upset and I was great that there's nothing wrong with me. Well, that's nice to hear, isn't it? <laughs> but it's still frustrating. Yeah. I tried to be understanding, but I couldn't be his emotional crutch if he doesn't want to be with me. So I was on guard and not giving into being attentive. So he switched on me. Said he didn't feel like I cared about him, or sometimes, and that I point out the things he does wrong to make myself feel Ooh. better. And that it's, that's, that it's all about what I want. All right. This feels very gaslighty. Yep. And why is it coming out just now? Mm-hmm. I think he's now anxious. Mm -hmm. He's losing emotional self-control. And he's just flailing around kind of emotionally, mm -hmm. trying to latch onto her and see whatever sticks here. Yeah. And this also seems a lot like, uh, I don't know if you guys have heard that term kitchen sink where couples just start throwing anything they can find into the argument. Yeah. Well, you know, I might be wrong about that, but you did this. Uh -huh. And that's just the vibe I'm getting. And it's, it's a way to forego taking accountability for your own actions. That's right. I agree. Because he's throwing it on her. Mm -hmm. and, and it's, it's a nice trick to get you off of the real topic, which mm -hmm. you've been trying to identify with him. Right. And it's not necessarily that it's all about her, but I can see how it can seem that way if you're suppressing your own feelings. You know, it could also be about you, but whose initiative is that? You know, who does it really take for that your needs come on the table and, you know, are able to, to talk about it? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think avoidance can do a nice job of when you try and bring up a problem with them. They say things like, you always make things about you mm. when you've suppressed your needs for six months and haven't said a word <laughs> right. to that person. Right. Right. And then they're mm. like, every time. And it's just very frustrating. Yeah. And there's nothing wrong for asking for what you want in a relationship. Yeah. You know, one thing that I really want to emphasize, especially in this coaching, is not to take on the other person's pathology. Sometimes we can have a lot of empathy for our partners and try to accommodate and create a safe place, but to the point where we're not advocating for our own needs. Yeah, yeah. And, and I think she's trying to really assert herself mm -hmm. here in a healthy way, and now he's not navigating it in a good way because he's out of control of it. Right, and he's not used to her having these boundaries. Yep, mm -hmm. and, and not having her at his whim, mm -hmm. right? Okay, let's go on. It was the opposite of what he said before, and I pointed it out. He wasn't making sense. I had always cared for him and showed it. He switched again, saying, and I haven't cared for you? Mm. This is not going anywhere right yeah. now. I told him, 
Sometimes I didn't feel like he did. I told him, I don't try to pick on you to make myself feel better. I'm trying to get you to see what you do is hurting me to fix it and improve. Sounds like she's really working hard at being an yeah. adult in this situation, yeah. right? She's a lot more patient than I've seen a lot of people be and maybe than I would be myself in this situation. Yeah, you can see that her, mm. that her hard work is really paying off in her emotional self-control yeah. here. Yeah. He was still angry that I wasn't being attentive to his feelings and hung up with me, on me with a snarky comment. Mm. I've been in no contact for almost a month now. I'm missing him, but I know I don't want to be with him right now if it's going to be the same as it's been. I will follow boundaries this time, but I fear it's too late for us. Do you think he will ever commit to me? Will I hear from him again? And if so, how long do you think it will take before I do? I know you don't have a crystal ball, but based off of your experience, what are the chances of hearing from him again? I also have the creative healing course and it's changed my life. So thank you. Well, that's what we love to hear. Mm -hmm. And that's really what we poured our heart into putting that together. Mm -hmm. And you can see that she's really handled herself oh, well. Yeah. And I, I definitely think she's going to hear from this guy again. Mm -hmm. I don't think there's any doubt of that. Yeah, I'd be cool. shocked. Mm -hmm. And I don't even think it'll be that long. I mean, right. she may have heard from him already <laughs> since this email coaching. That's true. That is Honestly. True. Um, because this guy is, I think, terrified in a lot of different ways. Mm -hmm. He's afraid to be with her, but I think he's also afraid to lose her. Right, right. And... As far as that commitment piece, I keep going back to that image of him in a panic talking about marriage. For an analogy, imagine somebody who's terrified of heights. It's like asking, when are they going to be able to skydive? Yeah. That's what we're talking about here. You know, that level of trauma, that level of fear, that level of aversiveness to commitment. Yeah, you'd have to slowly lead up to that, mm -hmm. you know? You'd, first, you'd like watch skydiving videos and research how safe it is. Mm -hmm. Then you might research the safest place to do it. Right. Then you might practice getting in the plane but not going up. Mm -hmm. Then you might practice going in the plane but not jumping down. You see what I mean? Right, like right. all of these things might lead you to doing that. But to lead, to jump from I don't ever want to skydive to yes, let's do it. I mean, yeah, there's right. a huge leap. Mm -hmm. She's done a tremendous amount of work and that's fantastic. You could see and all of her behavior, she's really acted like mm -hmm. an adult. But he's got to work through his issues. Like he mentioned earlier with what was it? Dad cheated on mom. Mm -hmm. He doesn't want to be an unfaithful husband. He doesn't think he'll be a good husband. Yeah. Okay, so you need to identify slowly what would make you a good husband versus a bad husband. Mm -hmm. what, what could you do? What did your dad do that you thought made him a bad husband or mm -hmm. dad? What can you do differently? By talking about it and dealing with those things, you can work through them. But I think he's got to make a real effort. And from what I can tell, he hasn't made one yet. Right, right. And if you also think about his childhood mind when all of this was happening, mm -hmm. a lot of kids tend to blame themselves. They don't have the cognitive functioning of an adult where we can logically process things and, and reason. They tend to blame themselves and think it was their fault. Yeah. So I, I don't know what his life was like. I don't want to make huge assumptions here. But what we do see often is kids blaming themselves, thinking it was my fault that, that dad you know cheated or that dad strayed from his marriage i had something to do with it somehow yeah yeah that's, those are good points um and ultimately those are things that he's got to really talk about mm -hmm. i mean if he's willing to get some help for himself and talk about his traumas you know you certainly seem like you're in a good place to help him along the way and be a good partner for him so i think you're going to do a lot less to trigger him and I think you're in a much better place to be a good partner for him than anybody else he's going to meet. Mm -hmm. So I think at this point she's showing him, I'm your best option. Right. But until he really sees, I got some problems here, I have to deal with this, I don't think he's going to be ready for her. And I think she's always going to be frustrated. Yeah, yeah. And also for you, the person who wrote this email, I can't imagine how incredibly challenging this whole thing is where somebody is back and forth. Your emotions are on a roller coaster and you don't know 
really what his word is or where he stands, I would say for you, just remember that his level to commit says nothing about your value or nothing about what you bring to the table as a partner. Sometimes yeah. we can be with you know a partner who's kind of flaky or on and off like that and think, man, if I was good enough, then this person would really stay. I mean, for, it was nice for her. He did say something like, you were great. There's yeah. nothing wrong with you. So that that helps to hear sometimes, right? right? Mm -hmm. uh, it can You can still be frustrated because it's like, well, you're telling me I'm great, but you still can't be mm -hmm. with me. That's on him. Mm -hmm. He's got to make some effort to change here because I think you've done a great job, but I don't think you should continue settling for less. I think right. she's got to say, look, if you're willing to get some help and willing to work towards this with me, I can be patient as long as we're going in the right direction, mm -hmm. but I'm no longer going to be put off to the side or hidden or not be invited to things because that just makes me feel like I'm kind of wasting my time here. Mm -hmm. I think that would be fair for her to say. Yeah. Yeah. Right. I'm really proud of her. Yeah. She's done a great job. Mm -hmm. She's handled it really well. So tough situation because she's done the work and she's in a good place. But she needs to see that he's going to make that same effort, at least some effort, mm -hmm. to be a good partner for her, right? All right. So hopefully this has been helpful to you. Of course, if you want to get our help personally, you can do that on my website, AskCraig.net. I do email coaching and I do Skype. And Coach Victoria is also available for Skype coaching. If you'd like to chat, I'm here. Just click on her name on the top of the website to do that. But that's it for this video. I'm Coach Craig Kenneth. And I'm Coach Victoria. And we will talk with you soon.